Today I will show you five important settings to master selection tools. Hello my friends, my name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to use my lasso tool over here. I'm going to set it to magnetic mode and select this citrus fruit here. You can see we have a nice sharp and high contrast edge, which is why the selection tool should work pretty nicely. And you can see it does. I can move my mouse around quickly and there we go. I've met the selection. So this is the part that you already know, but now comes the part that's really important for mastering selection and that is hidden up here in this menu. Click on select and down here you have four different areas to change or influence the selection after you have made the selection. The first one is grow and shrink. You can use either the fader as you can see to change the size of your selection. You can of course also enter a number for example minus five and hit enter key gives you a reduction of minus five pixels for the selection. Another way you can do that is by clicking and dragging your mouse and this will also change the selection size. There is only one problem with that. It doesn't seem to go to a negative value. So you can see when I go to the right, it's getting bigger. When I go to the left, it's getting bigger also. So that's not ideal. Um, a cool thing you can do though is when you click once, it will set your selection back to the original value. Also what you can do, uh, what you can see down here is that it says circular and circular will smooth out any edges that you have in your selection while changing the size. Although there is something to know about that, that I will show you right now. I will again use my freehand tool, set it to polygonal mode and go over here to the black area. This is why I have it so I can show you uh, in a better way how things are changing. You can see here I have some sharp edges now and uh, you should look here that you can see we have edges on the outside of our star but on, we uh, sorry we have sharp corners on the outside of our star but we have also sharp corners on the inside of our star and this is important now. So let's go back to select grow and shrink. You can see here if I normally grow and shrink it, uh, it will basically keep the sharp edges sharp. Um, but when I click on circular, what it will do is when I go bigger, it will round out the edges. Uh, but and this is why I told you to the inner and outer edges. You can see pretty clearly right now, if I make it bigger, it's rounding out the outer edges but not the inner edges. And if I make it in a negative value, oops, that was a bit too much maybe. Let's see. You can see that this will round out the inner edges, but not the outer edges. I really hope that Affinity Photo is getting a setting where I can set which kind of edges I want to, or which kind of corners I want to um, round out. Uh, right now it's just setting one or the other depending on one, what direction you're going in with your shrinking or growing of the selection. Okay, let's cancel this real quick and go to our next tool. And the next tool is called Feather. Uh, to show you this, I will do another rectangle over here. The blue color is okay. I will right click on my layer and rasterize it so it's converted from a rectangle to a pixel or from vector shape to a pixel shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my elliptical selection tool because I'm going to make a circle. And I have just made a circle right now with my selection without changing any of the settings. Up here you also have a feather setting, but you have to set this before you make the selection. So I will use Control C, Control V um, to make my selection real quick. And then I will click back to the original layer because the cool thing is with select and feather, you can change the fading, uh, the feathering of your selection even after you have made the selection. So you can see here with the radius, I will set it for example to let's say 10 pixels. 
seconds. There we go. And again, you can use the fader, you can use the mouse, click and drag, or you can use a number value, apply. And again, I will control C, control V to make a copy of that area of my blue um, rectangle. And now I drag both of them over here. First, the one without feathering in it, you can see has a sharp outer edge. Now let's use, let's move over the other one and you can see this has a blurred outer edge. So this is pretty nice to be able to blur your selection to feather the outside of your selection even after you have done the selection. And another thing that's important to notice here is, uh, let's go back to my freehand tool. Of course the blurring is following the form of my selection. So now if I go up here, I say feather. Whoops, that's a bit too big. Or maybe, no, maybe not make it that big. Okay, let's copy this real quick, move it over here. And you can see, of course, uh, this is following uh, the shape of my selection. So this is always a feathering around the shape that I have selected around the edge that I have selected. So that's pretty nice. And of course, another thing to notice is all of these settings can be combined. So you can shrink or grow a selection and then feather it afterwards or the other way around. So um, you can use any of those settings in any way you want. Now you can see here that it says feather, but it also says smooth. And this seems to be the same thing, but it's not the same thing. Uh, what smooth does, let's uh, delete these shapes here real quick, is one thing that we have seen before, but a little bit different way. Let's make a selection here again. You can see we have these sharp corners. There we go. And now if I go to select, what I can do with smooth is that I can smooth all the corners. And in this case, it's actually smoothing all the corners. You can see the outside corners, but also the inside corners are getting rounder. So that is very nice to smooth out a selection that you have done. This is especially useful. Let's deselect this real quick. If you made something with the poly polygonal uh, selection mode and you have all these straight lines, but you still want to have something that is um, a round shape, you selected it like this, for example, with individual clicks. Let's go up here. Bam, there we go. And if you want to have these outsides uh, now smoother, so it looks more like um, like an actual curve, you can go select smooth. And then with the settings, you can see how this is smoothing out the outside. Of course, the shape is changing a little bit at the same time. So again, I wish there would be a bit more settings, um, especially in this case to uh, set how far this will change the shape or keep the shape and just smooth out uh, the lines, uh, which is also possible, for example, in vector software, but it's not doing it right here right now. But you can see this is a way to use that. Okay, now there's another thing that we want to look at. Let's again use the elliptical tool. I will make a circle. There we go, we have a circle here and select outline. Outline will help me to create a selection that is, um, as you can see here, it's a circular shape. So this is moving from starting from the point that I've or the line that I've selected. It will move the selection outwards and inwards to select a stripe of this of the selection. And you can see right here it's based on center. So it's going in the same way outside and inside. I can also set it to outside. So this will keep my original selection and just move it outwards. Or I can set it inside. So this will keep my original selection, but move another selection inside. So I can have a ring inside. As you can see here, this is more like a strange rounded square shape. It's not really a circle. Um, you can use circular as you can see and this will actually turn it into a circle so that's very useful again and you can see here now we have a nice smooth circle and when i apply this and i will 
actually I can't uh, select it over here. I have to move my selection. Let's deselect this real quick. Go over here. Do the same thing. Select outline circular. I go to outside. And selection bigger like this. Apply it. And then Control C, Control V, and Control D to deselect. I was on the wrong layer. I'm sorry. Sometimes I'm a bit stupid. So there we go. Now I've done it the right way. And now if I move this up here, you can see we have a nice selected ring. So that's very nice. Um, another way to do that probably uh, what that you could do is to use your elliptical tool and then go to subtract to delete the area that you want to have. Um, but of course, this is another way to do it to give you an outline, especially when you have a more complex uh, shape. Let's do with the polygonal tool. We can do something like this, for example. And again, we can go in here to select outline and let's set this to 10 pixels. For example, you can see this is actually following the shape. And um, in this uh, situation when I click circular this will round out the edges so that's also very nice let's uh, make a copy of this real quick so you can also see the result there we go move this up here and move this over here and you can see we have an outline of what I just created by the way this little mistake here is something that I made while I created a selection is not um, a problem from the program but you can see the result is not super perfect like here's an arrow down here and there's another arrow up here so it's not the most exact way to do that use it with caution but now you know that these kind of settings are there and this will help you make a lot more complex and interesting selections and also work faster in your workflow. So thank you very much for watching. If you like my tutorials, uh, maybe subscribe to my channel. I do two tutorials per week. And if you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon where you can get my original files with all the layers. You can get feedback on your work and we can talk about topics that you want to see as tutorials. Thank you very much. See you in the next episode. Bye.